Oh, hey there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Good morning. Um, today we're going to talk about using old cameras that are that use obsoleted film formats and how to get some modern use out of those cameras. Now, specifically today's camera is going to be this nice little gem that I picked up from a thrift store. This is a Kodak Duoflex 2 camera. And this particular camera used 620 film. But anyways, what's cool about this little camera is it has a neat little uh, simple lens, but it has a bulb setting. There's, an, there's a setting for instantaneous shutter and a setting for bulb. And in our particular use, instead of using film in this camera, which we'd have to re-spool 120 or 35 millimeter film, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to load up some Harman direct positive black and white paper, print paper in the camera and we're going to shoot direct positives. So first of all, a little bit about this lens or this camera. First of all, on the camera itself there's no indication as to what the aperture is. So you have to go to the internet. In this case I went to Camerapedia and they indicated that uh, this particular lens, the Codet lens, is an F15 lens. Now I went ahead and kind of verified that by taking a metric scale, um, putting the uh, shutter in the bulb mode, opening up the shutter, measuring the apparent diameter of the aperture, and then comparing that with uh, dividing that into the actual focal length. And it is it does come out to f15 or very very close. So we're going to use that value of f15 um, for the exposures that we're going to do on this. So. To use this camera, uh, we're going to put it on a tripod, of course, because we're going to have you know multi-seconds long exposure. And I'm going to set the switch to bulb mode. And so when you do that, obviously, let me pop the back open. And as you push the shutter button, it stays open for as long as you hold the button down. So the other thing is about this camera, as far as loading our our direct positive paper prints in it. The particular um, size of print paper that we can put in here, um, first of all, the actual window for the film is roughly two and a half inches by two and a half inches. But there's a little bit, it's actually a little bit less, more like two and a quarter wide by two and a quarter, but it measures two and a half from flange to flange on the inside. And we can get about three inches uh, this way before it starts to roll over on on the body on either side. So we're going to try cutting paper into rectangles of two and a half by three inches. Okay, well let's say that you have you're cutting your paper down from eight by ten inch sheets, which I will be doing. So you have an eight by ten inch sheet here. Um, if you were to divide the ten side into quarters, you would have uh, two and a half inch wide strips. But on the other axis here you would need to do, in order to do three inches, you would have three inches, another three inches, and then you're going to have two inches of waste along here. So you're only going to be able to get about eight um, of these uh, little uh, paper prints out of an eight by ten inch sheet of paper. Um, conversely, another way of doing it that might be more efficient, here's the 8 side, here's the 10 side, is let's go ahead and instead of doing the 2.5 inches along this axis, let's do it along this axis. So if you divide this into thirds, such as there, you're going to have 2.5 inch wide strips. You'll have a half inch of waste along this edge. And then along the 10 inch side, again, if you um, divide it into thirds, you'll have three inch wide, and you're only going to lose about an inch along this side, and you're going to get nine prints out of one sheet of paper. So, this right here is the way that we're going to uh, uh, cut the paper up in order to make our individual little prints for the Duoflex. I have loaded. Um, a rectangle of direct positive paper into the camera after having cut it according to the plan that we just saw. Um, it's loaded in the back of the camera right now. Um, and so now we need to talk about how when we use or repurpose these old cameras, out of date, you know, antiquated cameras, when we repurpose them for use with uh, 
one shot uh, paper negatives or direct positive uh, paper, um, we have to think about two things, focus and exposure control. Now we know from the online manual of this uh, Kodak Duoflex that the, it's a fixed focus camera and it's, uh, the lens uh, is fixed where they recommend according to the manual that you don't shoot any uh, closer than about five feet from your subject. So this precludes the use of this camera for close-up still life kind of work. We're going to have to do more larger scenes. Uh, secondly is about exposure. Now when I'm shooting paper I'm using a, Go a Gaussian Luna Pro F I have it set to the ISO of the paper, which in this case is 3, and I use typically reflective metering. I went out this morning and looked at my bright, sunny, well-lit front porch, and I metered it, and the meter said that with the aperture of the camera being f15, um, I was going to need about an eighth of a second exposure time. An eighth of a second is too short for me to reliably time manually with a bulb shutter and it's too long for uh, the fixed instantaneous shutter speed of about a hundredth of a second. So the big lesson here is when you're shooting these kind of cameras you're gonna have to find the light that matches the camera. In this case I went to my back porch which is in the shade uh, with indirect north facing light and when I metered it I was able to get at f15 I was able to get a uh, shutter speed of about between two and three seconds approximately, which is perfect for a still life setting. Actually, for a seated portrait, that's not bad either if you have a head brace on the subject. But in this case, we're going to go out and we're going to shoot just an empty patio chair on my cluttered back porch. Okay, this is the setup for shooting my little back porch scene. We're going to be shooting that chair with that camera on the tripod. And I'm going to show you what the viewfinder of the camera is seeing. Okay, this is the viewfinder of the Kodak camera. We're looking down into it. And that is the scene that, we're, that the camera hopefully will record, or pretty close to it. Okay, so we're going to set the meter. We've set it to ISO of 3 for the paper. I'm going to meter the scene uh, with reflective metering. And we're going to zero the needle up on top on the needle. And then opposite of F15, which is just under F16, is about three seconds. Two and a half, probably close to two seconds, looks like. So we're going to do a two second exposure timed on the old wristwatch. Okay, I'm going to make sure that the shutter control button is on bulb or B, which it is. And Timing the exposure with our wristwatch, here goes. Okay, hopefully we'll have something. Okay, so when I have been usually processing small size pieces of Harman direct positive paper, typically in the 4 by 5 inch size, I've been using this Jobo test print tank. Now this is a model 2820 test print tank and it has the feature, when I open it up here, it has the feature of it has a shallow body and it has a large uh, um, central part for chemicals. Um, the paper, it, this particular tank holds two sheets of 4x5 paper along the edge. So it'll, it'll hold one sheet here and the other sheet here. Um, and the idea is it rotates sideways with the lid on of course on a Jobo roller base. Um, and so it uses only, it recommends only 40 milliliters of chemistry, which is very, very uh, minute amount, really. And so basically the chemicals is just sitting in the bottom, and as you rotate it, um, it's going to, you know, expose the uh, paper repeatedly to the chemistry. It'll immerse it and then take it out as you rotate it. Um, but the particular paper that we're using is really too small to sit in that tank and it won't really sit along the sides of the tank, it'll just get loose. So another way that I've discovered works really well for processing these smaller size prints is a standard uh, two reel um, metal stainless uh, 30, 35 millimeter type uh, developing tank. And what I do with this is I leave the metal reels in place. 
And what I actually do is I slip the paper into the gap between the, the inside wall of the tank and the reel with the emulsion side facing inwards. And then with the uh, tank uh, capped like this, instead of uh, doing a 35 millimeter style inversion and all that agitation thing, I set it sideways and rotate it. And I only need a very small amount of chemistry again, maybe 50 to 80 milliliters, and it'll, it'll just repeatedly immerse the, chemi the uh, paper into the chemistry. And I can actually, well, my, my current uh, roller base is set up for my Jobo bottle. So, but this particular back set of rollers, it will roll on. So I can actually sit here and balance it and just uh, process it like that in the kitchen, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I've gone ahead and I've loaded that single print into my developing bottle. So it's ready to go. I've also set up my chemicals. And I just wanted to in introduce uh, briefly how I process chemicals, uh, really small prints in small quantities. I've mixed up about roughly 80 milliliters of solution in each one of these. The first one is Ilford multi-grade developer that's diluted uh, roughly five and a half milliliters to about 75 milliliters water. Then I have a, a rinse and I don't know if you can tell but I have little marking lines in the cup where it'll, it tells me where to fill it up to. It's roughly 80 milliliters or 85. Anyway, rinse, stop bath, another rinse, fixer, and then I have two water rinses finally. And so I'm just going to go down and sequence and process these. The developer gets uh, about, uh, well with Harmon I like to do three minutes, and then 30 seconds for the stop and about two minutes for the fix. So I'm going to go ahead and process it and I'll be uh, putting the uh, bottle onto the roller base here on each step and rotating it. Okay, I'm just uh, doing a final rinse uh, to uh, the pink print. Let me turn the water off and we'll take the print out and show you. We'll take the top reel off and you can pull that print out there. And it looks to me like the initial, this initial test of this camera, we probably underexposed it. Because um, you can tell just by looking at the uh, highlights that they're a little bit muted and dark probably underexposed it, maybe didn't get as much development. The highlights on the chair aren't as bright as we'd like, but anyway, that is an example of um, how easy it is to make these these direct positive prints uh, with the Harman paper and a little old-fashioned camera. I will say, uh, related to uh, working with Harman, if the blacks are nice and rich, which in this case they are, that means it probably got sufficient development. And so my problem is most likely the, the exposure wasn't enough. And I also will note there's a tiny little light leak on this corner. So that camera, that old camera, is not entirely uh, light tight. But there it is. I wanted to say that since we had our chemicals already set up, I decided to break out my speed graphic 4x5, do some 4x5 direct Harman positive and process them here with the Jobo and the roller base and I have a couple little prints in this bottle here to show you. Um, I'll just pull out one of these here. This, these are still wet. These are actually pictures of my granddaughter's little dolly set up and I'm using just in light from, this is indoors but it's indirect sunlight coming in from the back from this, the north so it's very soft lighting and I think it's kind of an interesting picture. Looks like we got a good exposure that time. And since the bottle can do two 4x5 prints at once, you might as well take two pictures, right? So this one here, and there is another one. So that's a good example of what you can do with Harman Direct Positive in an old box camera of some kind.